Circuit Court, Branch 33 and 401, County is now in session. Honorable Lawrence C. Graham, Jr. presiding. Silence is commanded. You may be seated. John Bolton, second. I swear that all the testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth, but we'll put it on the conclusion of the doctor. I do. Please, Mr. Chair. And then would you state your name and spell your last name, please? Yes. Officer John Belserzak, B A L C E R Z A K. How were you employed in the morning hours of May 27, 1991? As a police officer of the City of Milwaukee. How long had you been a police officer? Approximately six and a half years. Were you assigned to a particular district station? I was assigned to a third district, City of Milwaukee. And what shift on that date? The uh, late shift. And what is the late shift hours? It will be midnight to 8 a.m. Had you gone to work that night at, at midnight? That is the be the beginning of the morning of May 27, 1991? Yes. And what was your squad patrol area? It's assigned to squad 36. And what's that area, roughly? The area is uh, North 16th Street to North 35th Street, West Lisbon Avenue to North Avenue. It's not infrequent that you're sent to areas to respond to complaints outside your particular squad area, is that correct? Uh, it's a regular occurrence. And sometime during that morning you were dispatched to a call outside your area, is that true? Uh, dispatched uh, probably to a number of calls outside of our squad area. Right. And did there come a time that you received a dispatch to the area of North 25th and West State Street in the city of Milwaukee? Yes. Is that strictly within your squad area or is that an adjoining area? It's in the uh, third district, but uh, uh, it's in a different squad area. And you received that from the dispatcher by, by squad <coughs> number, the squad 36 go to such and such an area? That, that's correct. Do you recall what the contents, the basic contents of the dispatch was? As I recall, the uh, dispatch was uh, to check for a naked man, badly beaten, 25th and State Street, anonymous caller. Did you go to that area then? Uh, yes, we did. And when you say we, who were you with? I was working with uh, my squad partner, Officer Joseph Gabrish. Were you both in uniform at the time? Yes. And you're in a regular Milwaukee Police Department uniform squad car, is that so? That's correct. As you approached the vicinity of North 25th Street and West State Street, what did you see? As we uh, approached uh, that, uh, the intersection, I observed a group of people uh, standing at the mouth of uh, an alley which is, runs parallel with State Street and directly south of State Street on North 25th Street. All right, you're speaking now of the mouth of an alley. That mouth is on 25th Street? That's correct. And this alley parallels West State Street, is that correct? That's correct. West State Street is an east-west street in the city of Milwaukee, is that true? That's correct. And so that this alley also then was an east-west alley south of State Street running parallel to State Street. That's correct. And you saw a group of people at what would be the western end of that alley, that is at North 25th Street. Yes. Right. What did you do when you saw that group of people standing at the mouth of that alley? Uh, we proceeded to the, that area, the mouth of the alley. And what did you do with your squad car? Uh, upon uh, arriving at the mouth of the alley, we observed uh, uh, two individuals uh, in the alley itself, at which point we turned into that alley. Right, these two individuals then were east of 25th Street, down the alley a bit towards 24th, is that so? Uh, they were into the alley, uh, partially into the alley uh, between the North 25th Street and the uh, North-South Alley of that block. All right, so that particular alley, that east-west alley, is cut by another alley that runs north and south. That's correct. <laughs> and the alley that runs north and south parallels North 25th Street and North 24th Street. That's Does that correct. Be true? 
So when you first saw the two individuals, they were standing in the east-west alley, just a little bit east of North 25th Street. Uh, that's correct, Pro approximately halfway between North 25th and the north-south alley. All right, you, did you pull your squad into the east-west alley? Yes. And were your lights on in the squad car? In reference to? Were the lights on, your headlights on in the squad car? Yes, the headlights were operating. Okay. What hour was it, to your best recollection, that you pulled into that alley with your headlights on? Uh, it would have been approximately 2, 2.06 in the morning. A.M.? That's correct. And what did you do after pulling into that alley? Your headlights illuminated these two men down the alley. Is that correct? To an extent, yes. All right. What did you see even as you pulled in with your headlights on? Can you tell the jury what you saw about these two men? Uh, observed uh, the two individuals. One uh, individual was uh, uh, naked, and uh, the uh, second individual appeared to be assisting him to his, to his feet and uh, beginning to walk as we were pulling into the alley. It appeared to you that he was helping up the naked man off, off, his, off the ground? Uh, it appeared that he was helping him to his feet uh, just, and had just concluded helping him to his feet uh, and began to walk. What did you do then? Uh, at that uh, point, uh, we stopped our squad, uh, or I should say I stopped the squad. Both uh, myself and my partner exited the squad. Uh, both individuals had uh, stopped walking and uh, turned back uh, to see what had pulled into the alley. Was your red light on, any, any uh, red lights on in the car? I don't recall if uh, they were operating or not. I don't, I don't believe they were, but I'm not but it's, fully. It's a city of Milwaukee marked police squad, is that true? Uh, that's correct. And there's a bank of red and blue lights on the top of it? That's correct. So anyone looking back, if they could see through the headlights, would recognize that that's a squad car pulling in? Uh, yes, they should. And you and your partner, Joe Gabrish, got out of the squad car. What did you do then? At that point, uh, we uh, proceeded toward the, uh, the two individuals. Uh, uh, it was apparent uh, to us that uh, this was what our assignment, uh, what the assignment that we had gotten sent to. Uh, you were satisfied that this naked man you saw in your headlights was the same naked man that had triggered the dispatch. You were satisfied you had arrived at whatever it was that caused the dispatch. That's correct. All right. What did you do then when you walked up the alley approaching these two men? Uh, as we approached uh, um, both uh, individuals, we. Uh, uh, separated both individuals as is a standard procedure to uh, determine what uh, is uh, happening, what, what is occurring right. in the alley. You separate them both and then separately question them, is that correct? That's correct. All right. Did you undertake to question one of the two men? Yes. And which of the two men did you, the clothed or the unclothed man, did you undertake to question? Uh, during our investigation, I uh, questioned the clothed male. And who was that man? What did you first ask? What did you ask him? Uh, I believe I started out by asking him uh, what uh, what's occurring. Uh, what did he say? Uh, at that point, uh, uh, he related uh, that uh, he was helping his roommate. And uh, what further was said or asked or said by you or him? Uh, during the course of uh, our investigation in the street, uh, we. Uh, obtained uh, uh, some information regarding uh, identities of the two and... Uh, did you ask him what his name was? Yes. The man to whom you were talking, what name did he give you? He gave me Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, and did you ask his date of birth? Uh, yes. Is that standard questioning procedure when you're investigating an incident? Yes. Get the name and address? Yes, it is. And uh, did he produce any type of identification at your request, or did he voluntarily produce identification? Uh, during the course of our, uh, my investigation, he produced a uh, picture work identification card. Do you remember when that was? Was that in the alley, or was it some, at some later point? No, that was while we were still investigating in the alley. And would you recall what that identification card was? Did it indicate his employment at a local West Side uh, chocolate factory? Yes, it was an employee picture ID card. And from looking at that card, the name, was there a date of birth, if you recollect, on that card? 
There may have been a date of birth on the card. After looking at that card, examining the picture, looking at his face, uh, getting his name and, and date of birth, were you satisfied that the man was using the right name and speaking his, his name and speaking with you? Yes. And th that name was what? Jeffrey Dahmer. Right. Do you see that man in court right now? Yes, I do. And would you stipulate? Right. That, let the record reflect that there's stipulation that's the defendant. What, if anything, did he say about the incident when you queried him or what, what's happening here? Uh, he related, related to myself that uh, uh, he was assisting his uh, roommate from the past few weeks uh, uh, back to the, uh, their apartment. He stated that uh, uh, his roommate uh, uh, had been drinking and had uh, passed out on the couch of the apartment and that uh, that's where he had left him when he had gone uh, to a local tavern uh, to obtain some beer or cigarettes. So Dahmer told you that this was his roommate, this naked man, that he had left his roommate earlier. The roommate had passed out in their apartment to, and he, Dahmer, had left the apartment with the man passed out and had gone to a tavern. That's correct. What else did he tell you then? He stated that uh, Upon returning from the uh, tavern, he observed his roommate uh, uh, on the street naked and was assist trying to assist him back to the apartment. And what, if anything, did you then do or say or observe at that point after he had told you this? Uh, in regards to? Any observations you made of him, anything you said or did at that point? He had now basically relayed to you what had brought him there and uh, the circumstances of the incident. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, what, what, if anything, did you do at that point or say or observe? I was making observations of, uh, of my entire time upon, since my arrival at the, the assignment. And, uh, what observations had you made of Mr. Dahmer? He uh, appeared to be a uh, uh, calm, uh, neatly dressed, uh, uh, Clean shaven, neatly combed hair, clean clothing, uh, no injuries of any sort, uh, uh, clothing, no, no disarray of his clothing at, at all. Uh, you were checking that to see if in fact there had been an altercation of some type? Is that what you were basically uh, making those close observations for? Yes, that would be the assignment we had gotten sent to was a, a man beaten and uh, uh, that you run through. Uh, numerous items that you, through your mind, that you, you uh, make observations and, and check during the course of your investigation. All right, because the dispatch had said man beaten, you wanted to know if he had been in a fight with this man, the naked man. Is that basically what you were interested in? Correct, to see if that, in fact, an altercation did occur. How did he answer to you? Was he hesitant or responsive? In what fashion did he respond to your questions? He responded, uh, uh, no hesitation in any type of response uh, to any of my questions. Uh, I responded in a, uh, uh, a calm, uh, clear voice. Uh, I myself uh, am a stutterer of, of sorts, and uh, I make observations uh, uh, of that if, if there is discrepancies and, and so forth of uh, individuals. Uh, there was nothing to suggest that uh, uh, he was not as he was presenting himself to, to be. What information, if any, did he give you about the naked man, other than saying he was a roommate? He said that the uh, uh, naked male was uh, his roommate uh, the past uh, three weeks, and uh, he provided a name and a age. What name did he provide? I believe uh, the name he provided was uh, John uh, Hmong. H-M-O-N-G, it sounds like? I believe. All right. And what if, what if any date of a or age did he give you for that young man's uh, birth? He provided the age uh, of 19 to 20. Had you made any observations as to the descent of the young man, the, the naked man in the alley? Yes. And what, had, what observations had you made? He uh, appeared to be an Asian male uh, of approximately that age. Right. Did the name John Hamung, H-M-O-N-G, <laughs> appear to you or occur to you to be a, a, a name that might be of oriental uh, nature? Uh, yes. Didn't. Uh, strike me as being unusual of any sort at all. What happened then, or what was said then, or what did you do then? Uh, we continued to investigate uh, uh, in the alley, 
uh, we were, I ran through the explanation uh, a number of times with uh, Mr. Dahmer. Why do you do that? Why do policemen make you repeat sometimes or jump around with questions and come back? Why do you do that? See if there's a uh, uh, discrepancy, uh, any variance in, in what was told to us uh, that would, uh, during the course of our investigation, that would help us uh, that, uh, possibly to uh, alert us to somebody not telling uh, us the truth. And if a person changes their, their responses, that may alert you that some, something's going on here and you're going to press further on it. Would that be accurate? Yes, if he changes responses or uh, any uh, uh, change in his mannerisms or so forth. For how long did you talk with him at that time before you had any communication with your partner, Mr. Gabrich? Uh, maybe approximately uh, approximately five, ten minutes. I'm not quite, I wasn't watching my, my uh, wristwatch to see. Did there come a time then that you conferred with Gabrish to see what he was learning from the Oriental man? Yes. What if anything communi was communicated between you and Gabrish? Uh, we exchange information as is normal, uh, see if uh, there's any discrepancies between the two individuals which we separated. In this case, you want to know if Gabrish is going to say that, that the Oriental has told him that this man was striking him or beating him or doing something like that. Is that basically why you're asking Gabrish what does he say about it? Well, uh, explanation as to the circumstances of our assignment and uh, as far as if there's any variance in Anything else, identification of uh, individuals or anything like that. All right, and what did Gabrish tell you? Uh, at the time, he advised me that uh, the uh, Asian male was not, uh, uh, was refusing to make any statements at all to him. Had you made it up to this point, did you make any particular observations yourself of the Asian male? Yes. And would you tell the jury what observations you made of the Asian male? Uh, Again, uh, uh, he uh, appeared to be an Asian male of the age group uh, given by uh, um, Mr. Dahmer. Uh, he appeared to be uh, intoxicated. He uh, had no clothing on. He had a minor abrasion to his knee. Um, other than that, uh, he was uh, appeared to be alert, uh, conscious of uh, our presence and. Uh, the presence of uh, uh, my partner. Did you hear him speaking at all, his voice at all, that is the Oriental male? No, I did not. What happened then was said or was done between and or by you and Mr. Gabrish? Uh, at that time, uh, after conferring with uh, uh, my partner, uh, I, as is normal uh, for any officers, would uh, then attempt uh, to- I'm I sorry, would you repeat that mistake? I'm sorry. After uh, speaking with uh, my partner, as would be normal for any police officer, I, I then made an attempt to uh, uh, speak with uh, uh, the Asian male in hopes that maybe he would uh, feel comfortable speaking to me or, or uh, see if I could obtain anything from him. It's your experience that sometimes a, an individual won't speak to one officer but will to another, a different a technique or approach or something like that? Yes. And so you then went over and saw if you could get information from the Asian male yourself? That's correct. Were you able to get any information from him? No, other than his being alert to my presence, uh, uh, he re refused to make any attempt to communicate to me. And you made a conclusion as to whether or not, or did you make any observations that caused you to reach a conclusion as to whether or not he was intoxicated in some fashion? Uh, yes. And what was that conclusion? Uh, to me, appeared to be intoxicated. The uh, uh, smell of uh, strong smell of alcohol on uh, his uh, his breath, uh, his unsteadiness uh, on his feet as uh, upon our arrival when he was uh, standing, uh, his uh, glassy eyed look. In that opportunity, when you were observing him, was he in front of the headlights of the car at that point? Upon when, as you were speaking to him, as you're now questioning the Oriental male. He would have been seated on the bumper of the squad car at that time. Did you see anything about his person beyond the scrape on the knee that you've earlier testified to? Did you see any other injuries on his person? No, I was able to view him upon our arrival uh, from the, his, his back and his front, and I was, uh, did not see any other injuries other than uh, an operation to his knee. 
What then happened or was said or was done after you attempted, you, did you get, were you successful at all in getting any information from the Asian male? No, I did not get anything from him. Did he simply remain silent or did he speak in some tongue you didn't understand or what if any communication was there? There was uh, nothing from him uh, verbally, phys physically, uh, facial, facial expressions, nothing other than just his being aware that I was there and talking to him, asking him questions, he just didn't respond. What did you then do or say after you had made these observations and this attempt to communicate with the Asian male? At uh, that time, I think, uh, as I recall, I, I uh, spoke with Mr. Dahmer uh, again and uh, may have spoke with my partner another time. Now, at some point, uh, had fire personnel arrived on the scene or you became aware of fire personnel? I, I don't recall. Uh, are, are you speaking of my knowledge at that time, or well, what I know, what I know now? Well, uh, going back to then, to that particular early morning hour at about 2 a.m. in this alley, did there uh, come a time when you became aware that fire people had arrived at the scene? Myself personally, I, I uh, was not aware that uh, they had been there. No. Were you aware that at some point a blanket of some type had been put around the Oriental male? Yes. When you spoke with him, after you had initially talked to Dahmer, came back, spoke to Gabrish, then undertook to question the Asian male yourself. When you were questioning, was there now a blanket on him? Yes. After you had completed this effort trying to talk with the Asian male, you went back and talked to Gabrish and then back to Dahmer again. Is that what transpired? I believe so, yes. Right. What was the conversation at that point with Mr. Dahmer? Uh, may have been, I believe, checking the Again, just trying to substantiate uh, everything. As More I questions. Was, right. right. And what happened then? Had he told you where he lived, Dahmer, and when you had asked the name and did you ask the address and so on? Yes. His, what, what, was, where was the address with respect to where you were right in that alley? That would have been uh, uh, at the other, south end of the, the city block that we were on. The, the, is the, the end of the alley, the, the, the north-south alley? Uh, basically, yes. That would so be. would that put you within a few apartment buildings of his address? That's correct. Uh, you were in the 900 block of North 25th Street, this alley, is that correct? That's correct. And he advised you he lived in the 900 block of North 25th Street? Y yes. So you knew you were within a couple of doors of his residence, is that so? Yes. All right. You, you questioned him again, and then what was said or done? Uh, at that time... Uh, I made an appeal to the people that were there uh, asking uh, if anybody knew uh, the Asian male. Uh, right, you have indicated that as you came up to the scene, you saw a group of people there in the mouth, at the mouth of the alley. Now you start to talk to those people. You're going to see to get, try to get some information about the Asian male? Right, for, uh, for a matter of my record. Right, what, did you, what inquiry did you make of, the, of these, the people that were there? Uh, I asked in a loud uh, voice uh, uh, if anybody knew the, this person and regarding, uh, in reference to the Asian male, at which point uh, I received no response from the right. individuals. What did you then do or say? Uh, at that uh, time, uh, I believe we talked, uh, I talked to my partner and uh, this, we decided to go back to the uh, apartment to further our investigation and to uh, Further our investigation and to, and to uh, have uh, uh, the Asian male off the street since he was naked. So you and Gabriel decided, okay, we'll go over to the apartment where, where, where Dahmer had told you he and this Oriental roommate, Oriental male were roommates, is that correct? That's correct. All right, what happened then after you and Gabriel made that decision? Had other officers arrived on the scene in, this, in the interval that you've been describing? Another squad had arrived on the scene during the course of our investigation on the street, yes. Did you observe who those officers were that had arrived on the scene? Uh, one officer I observed. And what is his name? That would be uh, Officer Richard Brupkin. Right, and, but, and presumably he arrived with a partner, but you did not see that partner? I don't recall seeing him. All right, after you and Gabriel decided that, that the group would go back to the apartment building, what happened? Uh, at that time, uh, Mr. Dahmer uh, uh, went to assist uh, uh, his, uh, the Asian male to his feet uh, to uh, escort him 
Uh, uh, did you announce to them we're going back to the apartment? You did, not, did you advise that to uh, advise Dahmer of that? Uh, it wasn't uh, as much as uh, uh, announcing as, as much as it was uh, 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 saying that, well, let's get him off, uh, have him uh, off the street. We're going to back to the apartment. To All right, so somebody went back to the Asian male who was sitting on, was he still on the bumper of the squad car? He was just sitting uh, uh, upright by himself on the bumper the whole time. Right. And he was advised, you're going back to the, to the apartment building. Was he assisted in any way at that point? Uh, he was uh, initially assisted by Mr. Dahmer, I believe, uh, uh, not to the point of being carried of, of any sort or anything like that. He was assisted in just uh, uh, guidance, uh, just being steadied as he, as he walked. Right. Did, did any other officers assist, uh, if you recollect? It would have been uh, my partner and then uh, uh, Officer Propkin. Right. What did you do at this point? They're starting... Uh, did Dahmer say which, how he would get into his apartment? Did he indicate some fashion in which he would enter his apartment building? No, I, didn't, I don't recall him indicating that. All right. What, in which direction did the group head? There's now Dahmer, the Oriental Male, Perubkin, yourself, and your partner, Mr. Gabrish. Is that correct? Uh, yes, they, uh, they were on foot, and I had uh, followed him in the squad car. You went and got in the squad car? That's correct. All right, and which way did the group head? They walked uh, east into the uh, east-west alley where we had been uh, until they reached the north-south alley, and at that point uh, they turned uh, south into that alley. All right, so that, 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 that north, that east-west alley that parallels State Street, We've already indicated that split in mid-block by a north-south alley. Is that correct? That's correct. So the group walks east to the north-south alley and then turns south and walks south down the north-south alley. Is that correct? That's correct. How far did, you, did they walk south? You're following in the squad car? Yes. All right. How far did they walk south down that alley? They uh, walked to the rear of the last building on the south end of the alley. And is that the building you know as the Oxford Apartments? Yes, I believe that's what it is. All right. Is there a back door into that apartment building? Yes. All right. Did the group head, are there some steps that lead to that back door? Yes. All right. When the group reached that area, did they proceed up, up those steps towards the back door? Yes, they did. And at that point, you determined you'd what, you'd get out of the squad car and follow? Yes, at that point I uh, parked the squad, locked it up, and, and followed on foot. Did Mr. Dahmer have a key into that back door into the apartment building? I wasn't in a position to see. At any rate, when you started up the steps, the door was open and you followed in. Is that correct? Uh, I, correct. I followed the other group in. Right. As you did, did, was there some walk down a hallway or partway down a hallway to get to Mr. Dahmer's apartment? Yes, it was a little little bit into the building itself. Right. Were you in that hallway by the time he undertook to unlock the door into his apartment? I would have been in the hallway, yes. Right. And did he unlock the door? Again, I was not in a position that, to observe how he was entering his apartment. At any rate, because the, the Perubkin, Gabrish, the Oriental Male, and Dahmer were between you and the Dahmer, Dahmer's door, is that correct? I believe that's how So they obstructed your view of what happened. But at any rate, he opened the apartment door, Mr. Dahmer did, and the group went in. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, was there any hesitancy by him about going into the apartment? No, there was no hesitance uh, uh, by him either on the street of before when we uh, stated we are going to, about uh, going back to the apartment. And uh, there was no hesitation at any time. Uh, about uh, op allowing us into the apartment of any and sort. He so. didn't ask for a warrant or anything like that? No. All right, he opened the door and all of you went in. Were you probably the last to go in? Uh, I would believe so, yes. When you got in, uh, can you tell the jury basically when you open up, is it a living room opening up into the uh, the first door, first uh, room you enter from the hallway? It's a apartment build apartment itself. It uh, has a short hallway and uh, there'd be a living room uh, in an open area to the kitchen. All right. Is there, was there, if you, did you notice any doorway to the right leading into a bedroom or bathroom? Uh, may have been a short, uh, again, a, a short hallway where there was a, uh, a door or two, which uh, I assumed was the, the bathroom or bedroom. All right. Did you go into that area at all? 
No. Do you have any recollection whether that was closed when you got when you walked into the that area that would provide access to the bedroom and bathroom? Do you recall if that the access to that hallway there was a closed door there or not? If you recollect. Uh, to the hallway or to the rooms itself? No, to the hallway that would lead into the bathroom and the bedroom. I believe that the, there was no no door to the hallway itself, my recollection, uh, but just to the individual rooms it, them, themselves. Did you look into a bedroom or a bathroom at all? No, the, those doors, uh, as I recall, were closed and had no reason to venture to into there. But when you came in to the living room, what observations did you make? The apartment, uh, of the apartment itself? or uh, Yes. The apartment uh, uh, was a neat, uh, well-kept apartment. Uh, Did you make any particular observations with respect to the, was there a couch in the living room? Yes, there was. Did you make any particular observations of that couch? The uh, couch uh, in regards to where it was positioned or what was on it? Where it was positioned, what was on it, whatever you observed of it. Uh, the couch, uh, I believe, was against the east wall of the apartment. Uh, had uh, a blanket or, or a sheet, as I recall, on the, cl uh, on the couch uh, and uh, uh, some clothing as, it, as if someone had been sleeping on the couch and with the blanket. Right, what impact did that have on you, that observation? Uh, that, to me, uh, further substantiated uh, uh, what I had been told uh, uh, on the street uh, during my investigation on the street. And as we further investigated, that, that substantiated uh, uh, that uh, from Mr. Dahmer that uh, someone, that his roommate had been uh, sleeping on the couch, and passed then, out. And the clothes were there on the couch also? Yes. What if any observation did you make in your, you described it as a neat apartment. Did you see any evidence of a struggle in that apartment? No, there was uh, uh, no signs of any uh, uh, disturbance or struggle of any sort. Everything was in its place and uh, it was uh, a clean, uh, well-kept apartment. What, uh, what if anything was said or done at that time? There are now the three officers, you, Gabrish, Perubkin, the defendant, Mr. Dahmer, and uh, the Asian, the Ar Oriental male, is that correct? That's correct. And uh, what did the Oriental male do when you came into the apartment? What was uh, he doing or had he done by the time you came into the apartment? As uh, I was walking to the apartment, uh, uh, he proceeded to the couch and uh, he sat in an upright position on the, on the edge of the couch. Uh, since that time, since the May 27, 1991 morning, you have come to know that Asian male by a name other than John Hamong, is that correct? That's correct. And by what name have you come to know him? As uh, Conrad uh, Simpha Sinfon. You've seen pictures of him and so on, and, and that was the male, the Oriental male that you were observing at that early morning hours you've come to know as Conrad Simpha Sinfon, is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Right. As you're making these observations, you see the, the sheet on the bed or on the couch, the sheet or blanket, the clothes. What other observations did you make at that time or what was said or done at that time in the apartment? At that time, uh, I was uh, uh, talking to uh, Mr. Dahmer and uh, my partner was uh, next to me uh, in an area not too not too distant from me. Officer Prupkin was uh, off to the side uh, towards some t uh, a table toward the kitchen area. Uh. And do you recall what you said to Dahmer at this particular time, what the discussion was about? Were you looking for anything at that point? Uh, at, the, at that point, we had proceeded back to further uh, investigate and to uh, further su just to substantiate everything and, and uh, uh, do you recall observing, or do you recall or not, whether any of the other officers started through the clothing that you saw uh, that was seen on the couch? I don't recall myself uh, uh, that uh, incident uh, or that, that part of, of the, our investigation. Uh, you, in other words, you don't know what particularly what Gabrish or Perubkin was doing at that point. Other, you were more or less talking to Dahmer. They were nearby because it's a small apartment, but you weren't particularly observing what they were doing, I take it, at that point. I wasn't watching them directly, no. What then happened or was said or done? By... By anybody? Um, 
Officer uh, Perupkin uh, uh, picked up uh, a one or two Polaroid pictures off of a table, uh, and uh, he held them up uh, to our view uh, so that we could view them and uh, brought them to our attention. Were you close enough, proximate enough, that you could uh, make a review yourself of those Polaroid pictures? Yes. And what appeared in those Polaroid pictures? Uh, it was a uh, picture uh, of uh, Symphony Symphone uh, posing in a either black uh, underwear or uh, bikini briefs uh, in that apartment itself. I ask you to examine what has been marked as State's Exhibit number 68 and 69. Uh, can you tell the jury, are those photographs? Yes. And are they photographs of a man you've come to know, a male you've come to know as Connor X and phone? Yes. And uh, would you describe to the jury what is presented in those photos? It's a picture of uh, uh, it appear to be the, the same Polaroid, uh, uh, which I viewed the, upon that early morning hours. And what do they? What does the picture show? Uh, it shows uh, 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 Mr. Simphone uh, uh, posing in black uh, bikini briefs or uh, underwear uh, in a relaxed pose uh, in the apartment itself. Is he in one of the poses? Is he on the couch? Uh, yes, one of the poses, he's uh, uh, stretched out on the couch. Do, are his eyes open? Yes, they are. Does he appear to be conscious in that pose? Yes. Does it appear to be a deliberate posing? Yes, it appears to be a relaxed uh, uh, pose for whoever was taking the pictures. And what does the second picture contain? Uh, again, it contains the, the same uh, uh, setting, that of the, the apartment. Uh, yeah, along with uh, Mr. Zinfone uh, with his uh, bikini briefs uh, posing. Is he standing or reclining in the second photo? He is uh, standing. And do, are his eyes open? Yes, they are. Does he appear to be conscious? Yes. Right. You were shown those photos by Perubkin or, or copies of those photos by Perubkin at that time in the apartment? It would be, uh, uh, I believe they were Polaroid pictures, uh, yes. Right. What was said or done at that time? Uh, upon... Uh, yes, after you observed those, Perubkin showed them to you. Did he show them to Gabrish too, if you recollect? Uh, Officer Gabrish, myself, uh, along with uh, Mr. Dahmer and Mr. Simpson-Siphon were all in a position to view those, yes. And what happened then? Or was said or done at that point, after you looked at those photos? Uh, said or done by us or by... Yes, by anybody in the um, room there. I believe uh, Mr. Dahmer made a statement uh, that uh, it seemed, to me he appeared to be a little embarrassed uh, about it and made a uh, statement or said something to the effect that everybody has to be into some, something. Everybody has to be into something? And right. you drew some conclusions from that? Uh, <laughs> from the pictures and the statement or from the yes. statement? Uh, to me, it appeared, uh, uh, yes. All right, and what were those conclusions? That there was a relationship uh, 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 of sorts between the two individuals. Uh, uh, Is there anything in the pictures that suggested to you that it either was consensual or non-consensual from looking at the pictures? From the pictures, it appeared to be a, a consensual type of pose, a relaxed posing. And and you could no tell distress the, of any sorts uh, in the pictures. Right. I'm sorry. Would you read the rest of the answer? Uh, I'm just going. Uh, it appeared to be a consensual type of pose, relaxed pose, no distress of any sort. Did not appear to, and you could tell from looking at the picture, the pictures that had been taken in the very apartment in which you were standing. Yes. Right. What, what did that influence what then transpired? Your decision. Having seen those two pictures, it just uh, to to, uh, to me it just further substantiated uh, our invest my investigation that of my partners that uh, uh, everything was substantiated 
appeared to substantiate what uh, uh, Mr. Dahmer had uh, related to us throughout the investigation. What if any, after those pictures were shown by Perubkin, what if, and Mr. Dahmer said, everybody's got to be into something, what did you then do or say? Uh, at that time, uh, uh, I believe I uh, uh, spoke to Mr. Dahmer stating that uh, if uh, we or the police returned uh, for a similar behavior, then uh, uh, some action would have, would be taken. And this is referring to if, if synthesis foam lines is seen out on the street naked again, further action will be taken? Uh, yes. What, and after, did he respond to that at all, Dahmer? Uh, I believe he said something to the effect that he, uh, he assured us that uh, he'd take care of them and uh, that they wouldn't occur again. What, if anything, then was said or done? Uh, at that point, uh, we basically concluded uh, uh, our assignment and uh, uh, we left the apartment. The, hey, the three of you left the apartment, the three officers? Right. There was, uh, uh, as we left, we uh, made uh, uh, Mr. Simpson and Vaughn aware that we were leaving, uh, as well as Mr. Dahmer, and we proceeded uh, to leave. Right. And did you leave? Yes. All right. During the time that you were there, had Mr. Cynthia Symphone done or said anything besides sitting on the couch? No, he remained seated in an uh, upright position by himself, uh, and uh, he just uh, was watching what was happening in the apartment, just uh, watching uh, us and Mr. Dahmer. During the, that time, did he say anything, Mr. Cynthia Symphone? No, he did not. During that time, was there a light on within the apartment? Uh, there would have been some lights on, yes. Did you make any additional observations as to any injuries of Mr. Synthesis and Phone? Uh, the only injuries that I, I had observed on him uh, or anyone, Mr. Dahmer or him, Mr. Dahmer had nothing uh, to him. Uh, the only injuries I observed to uh, Mr. Symphone was uh, the abrasion to his knee. When you were in the apartment in that fashion, had he kept the blanket around him? Synthesis and phone? Uh, I believe when he sat down, he relaxed uh, regarding uh, his holding the blanket around himself. Uh, there was no need to, he was not in the public's eye per se. Uh, Has the, had the blanket, how had the blanket been? Was it about his shoulders or his head or about his waist? In what fashion do you recollect he had, this blanket had been about him? Uh, initially, when he was, when I first observed the blanket, I believe it was around his, would have been around his, his uh, shoulders, uh, kind of draped over his shoulders and his back and his, uh, uh, basically coming just below uh, uh, to, to his thigh. And, uh, and uh, as he walked back to the apartment, it uh, might have uh, then gone to a lower, more like wrapped around his, his waist. Right. This you would have seen from following in the squad car. Yes. And you had made observations of Mr. Dahmer in the alley. You said basically that he appeared neat, calm, uh, hair in order, clothing in order. When you got into the building and had observations of him within the lighted apartment, did you add, was there anything more you added to those observations? No, he just, re he remained uh, uh, calm and forthright uh, uh, to me, I appeared uh, through the entire investigation. Now, after, you, when, you, when the three of you left, did Mr. Synthes and Phone get up or do anything of that nature as the three officers, you three officers started to leave? No, throughout the, uh, our investigation, he uh, made no physical or verbal uh, communication with us. Had you ever seen Mr. Synthes and Phone before, to your knowledge? To my recollection, I've never seen him before. Had you ever seen Mr. Dahmer before, to your knowledge? To my recollection, I've never seen him before. To your recollection, have you ever been in that particular apartment before? Uh, the apartment itself? Not the building, okay. just the apartment itself. Not uh, to, to my recollection, I've never been in there. All right, were the Polaroid pictures left there? Do you know what Mr. Perubkin did with them? I don't recall if he set them back. I, after briefly looking at them, I, he just held them up and what he did with them after that, I don't recall. Was Perubkin also a uniformed officer? Yes, he was. Right. So there, the uh, Majeski, the fourth officer, did not enter the apartment at any time, I take it? No, not that I recall.
Can you tell us, you've indicated that he was calm during this time. Let me ask some additional questions. Was Mr. Dahmer responsive to the questions you put to him? Uh, yes. Did, he at, did you at any time as you went back and forth and, and re-questioned him on different points, was he inconsistent at any time in his responses to you? No, he wasn't. Did he appear to understand what you were asking of him? Yes. Did he appear incoherent at any time? No. Was he non-responsive to your questions at any time? No. Did, he, uh, did you see any evidence of a delusion, uh, that he was in a delusional state at that time? No, he appeared to be a normal person. Did, you, did he appear to you to be hallucinating at that time in any fashion? No. Uh, did he appear to be in a stupor of any type? N no. Did you form any opinion as to whether he had been drinking particularly that evening, if you recollect? The only thing uh, I could say that uh, he did not appear to be intoxicated to me. As far as his possibly drinking, I, I wouldn't be able to say. Did he appear to you to be in any way out of touch with reality? No. While you were in the apartment, did you smell anything unusual, if you recollect? No. How long were you in the apartment, the time that, that you were actually in the apartment itself? Exactly, the exact time I couldn't get. Not you, the exact know. time, approximate time. Uh, maybe five uh, to eight minutes or so. How much time transpired from the time you initially started to talk to Mr. Dahmer in the alley until the time you walked out of the apartment? How much time frame are we talking about? Maybe about uh, 20, 20 minutes or so, the exact time. Again, I wasn't watching my wristwatch. So. And thereafter, after you left the apartment, you returned to a, another assignment? After leaving, we went uh, into service and attempted to go and uh, to clean up. Okay. Thank you. cross examination I have relatively few questions, Officer Baldwin. Um, if, uh, if my client informed me that one of the officers uh, took a flashlight and looked from the top of Mr. Synthophone's head to the bottom of his feet, uh, would that have been you or another officer who was present? No, it was not me. Okay. You never saw any signs of blood other than this small abrasion on the knee, correct? To Mr. Symphone? Yes, yes, that's all. Okay. Now, when you went back into the apartment, uh, uh, did you have to go back into the apartment? Was there any violation of law that you saw as far as what Mr. Dahmer was doing? In regards to Mr. Dahmer, you say? Yeah. No, there was nothing. You couldn't have arrested him if you wanted no. to, correct? No, that's correct. So when you went back into the apartment, you were going back there to make sure that everything was okay? That, that's correct. And when you got into the apartment, did you see any violations of law in your presence that you could have effectuated an arrest for? No. Did uh, Mr. Dahmer, uh, uh, did, it, did there come a time, it's Mr. Dahmer recalls uh, one of the officers checking uh, the, the clothes of uh, this young man were all folded neatly. Did you see how they were folded? Uh, I recall that they were uh, uh, laid out on the, cou on the couch, but not as, as to whether how they were folded. Yeah. They were not but strewn around the apartment or not. That's, I mean, you didn't see just clothes that like had been ripped off or pulled off. Right? No, not at all. They were you know, and, put in place. And if it was reported that one of the officers was looking for ID by touching the trousers, uh, that was that you or another officer? Um, I don't recall if, if that was me doing that or, or not, but... Do you recall Mr. Dahmer saying there's no, you won't find any ID in those pants, but he doesn't carry his ID? Did you hear that? No, I, I, don't, I don't recall that. You don't recall hearing no. that? Okay. Um, you couldn't have left uh, the area of that living room based upon what you've seen and going around that apartment even if you wanted to, correct? That's correct. Yeah. That's all I have. Thank you. Redirect? No. Give me a step down, sir. Thank you. Your Honor, the state calls Mr. Sopo Princewell. 